What's up guys, it's Ashley Christ and welcome back to my channel where I give you tips and tricks for the aspiring master content creator. In this video, I really want to target those people that have like less than 20 viewers on Twitch that just feel stuck and like they don't know what to do or maybe they're new to the platform and they're overwhelmed or they're just looking at everybody that has hundreds of thousands of followers and they're like, I have no idea how they started. How did they do this? So I'm going to give you guys my personal tricks that I have learned over the years. So the first thing you're going to want to do is preliminary work. A lot of people don't do this preliminary work and so whenever they start streaming they don't really know what they're streaming or why they're streaming it. They aren't in the right headspace. They kind of can like compare themselves to others um, and they just don't understand why they can't get more than two or three viewers. So the first thing that you need to do is get really clear on your why. Why are you streaming? Is it for money? Is it for friendship? Is it to be around other people that have the same interests? Any reason can be viable, but I think that um, at the end of the day, what you need to do is make sure that you're giving your community the entertainment that it wants. A lot of people have this negative connotation on Twitch about streaming for money, and it's not necessarily a bad thing. People deserve to be paid if what they're creating is really great. And so I think the problem occurs whenever you're expecting to be paid and you're not really doing that much um, or you're new to the platform um, and you don't really contribute or you're not really innovating um, and you just kind of expect to collect a paycheck. But if you are streaming because you want to make money but you're also delivering what your community wants, then that's not a problem. Your why has to really speak to you as a person. If your why is just because you want to kind of make yourself have this better, more prestigious position within the community and within kind of like the gaming scene and the culture and the, the professional community as well, that's not gonna be enough to carry you through the hard times. And those hard times will come with streaming. You'll have days where you don't feel like turning on the camera, you don't feel like talking to anyone. If your why is something that is shallow and doesn't truly speak to the reason that you start streaming, you will not stick with it. So you need to get really clear on the reason that you're starting and it needs to be something that is personally fulfilling for you and also fulfilling for other people. The next thing you want to do after you've figured out your why and you figured out actually why you want to start streaming is you need to figure out what kind of content you're going to be be creating and what schedule you want to have. Setting a schedule is so important, okay, because people know whenever Game of Thrones is going to come on, right? They have expectations to see you. Now, if something comes up and you have to cancel, that's totally fine. You can just kind of tweet out that you're not able to make it. Um, just let everybody know in Discord, and it's not a big deal, but people do expect to see you routinely. And whenever you start to have this routine where you're gonna be showing up consistently, people will start showing up for you. They want to invest in people that they know are invested in them and the platform. After you figure out that schedule, you need to determine what you want to be streaming. So are you gonna be a variety caster? Are you gonna be cooking? Are you gonna be doing creative or drawing? Or maybe you only play MOBAs or maybe you do um, time trials, whatever speed runs that was wrong <laughs> kind of knowing what general direction you want to go in is going to help you on those days when you're like i have no idea what i want to stream it's really easy if you stick to one community but a trap that a lot of people fall in whenever you stick to one gaming community is that they will stick to these very high viewership esports titles like overwatch dota league of legends and i actually don't recommend streaming any of those at all ever if you have less than 100 viewers. And that's because they are so popular, you will get thrown at the very bottom of the directory and nobody is gonna scroll to the bottom to watch an Overwatch stream with five viewers whenever Valkia is streaming. That's not to say it can't be done, but you have to be extremely unique to be able to stand out in one of these heavy viewership esports title genres. So after that, we want to set up our page and all of our graphics and have all of that branding information reflect our why and reflect um, the content that people are going to find. You also want to leave links to like Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all of your social media so people can con continue the conversation. You want to make like a Discord. Um, as many 
links that you can give for people to get more engagement and more interaction out of you, the better. All right, and once you've done all this, you figured out why you wanna do this, what you're going to do, and you've set up everything to be able to do it, then you need to get in the right headspace. And this is something that definitely develops as you stream more and more. I'm like dancing right now, but basically you don't want to jump the gun on reaching for opportunities. A lot of streamers start streaming and then they'll start reaching out to companies with like five to 10 consistent viewers. And you don't have a valuable portfolio whenever you're newer. Um, you really need to build up a portfolio of you being there and growing a community in order for sponsors and businesses and organizations and partners to be interested in you. All of your energy in the very beginning, 100% of it, if you have less than partnership needs to be on growing your community. And there are different things that you can implement at different stages, but for this specific video and for people that have less than 20 or 25 viewers, you need to be focused on the people in your channel. Focus 100% of your time. Don't be emailing companies asking for them to sponsor you. Focus your time on your community and go talk to them and build it. All right, so at this point, you're gonna wanna click that start streaming button and get started. Congratulations, it's so exciting. Whoa. But immediately you need to start working on a personal growth. And this can be something that a lot of people kind of don't acknowledge. Um, but whenever you are a streamer, you are a community manager. You are looking to grow a community and you need to be seen as a leader. Okay. And in order to do that, leaders have confidence. Leaders have a voice. Leaders have their lives together for the most part, a lot of them don't, but <laughs> we'll get to that in a different video. When you start streaming and you are streaming consistently, you're gonna learn a lot about yourself and about the Twitch community and about gaming and about things like social media and marketing and uh, brand design. And there's so, there's so much to learn with this. And that's a great part about it is because we can learn so many valuable skills, but at the same time, we also have to be developing ourselves to turn into the leader that our community needs. So you need to learn things like confidence, conversation skills, how to have hard conversations with people, um, how to set boundaries. There are a lot of different personal skills that you need to have to be a successful community manager and thereby a successful streamer. I'll link my favorite personal growth books down below, but for right now, I just wanna say that how to win friends and influence people in the digital age is going to help you so much. And I'll leave the link for that book down below because it has just taught me so much about those personal skills that you need to have to grow a community. Common traps here that people fall into is that they start comparing themselves to others. Um, they start thinking that there's only one path to success and if something doesn't happen the right way for them, then they're just not going to make it. You are not those people. You are your own person and your job is to amplify your own personality and be yourself. This is why working on yourself is so important because without that growth and without finding your own confidence and your own voice, you will always compare yourself to others and you will always try to be what they are whenever you could be such a better you. They're already taken. They're already doing their own thing. You can't take what they're doing. You need to do your own thing. When you're streaming, I think that you also need to realize that you are entertaining. You are basically a TV show. So amplifying your personality is something that just comes with the space. It's not that you're being malicious or you're trying to misdirect people, but you still need to be yourself. You just need to project, project more of yourself outside to the world. Amplifying your personality and interacting with your channel is one of the best things that you can do. A lot of people say that they're like high engagement, high interaction, but then whenever you go to watch them, they have two or three viewers and they haven't talked for 20 minutes. You can't do that. You literally have to talk the entire time while you're streaming. I'll make another video about this at some point because this is definitely a skill Whenever I first started streaming, I was afraid to talk to the camera. It probably took me a good like four months to get comfortable speaking to a webcam like it was another person. But you will get there. It's definitely a skill that you can develop.
When you amplify your own personality like this, it gives you the ability to hype your community up. And so anything exciting that happens on the stream or whenever you start the stream or if you're just happy to be there, really anything that happens, you are able to call for people to spam emotes. You're able to ask for the things that you want. And you want to ask for these things in a happy, kind of this projected personality of yourself. You don't want to ask for them in a way that is negative. So if you want people to follow you more, be more excited about it. Recognize those people that are coming to your channel and are following it and give them that special recognition and that extra attention from you. But don't sit there and kind of be down on yourself and say like, hey, um, would you follow me? Because like nobody else follows me, man. You've been here for like an hour. Why don't you just follow me? That seems really entitled. <laughs> that seems really rude. And people don't want to follow people that are entitled to viewership. My next tip is set goals that you can control. Technically, according to goal setting science, everybody on Twitch sets goals the wrong way. Okay, we set goals based on numbers. So we want three subs in a day, or we wanna reach 20,000 followers, but that's actually not the right way to set goals. Um, it does work because you are able to kind of celebrate that goal with your community and that success with your community, and that can be really exciting to watch and participate in and feel like you were a part of. But goal setting science is very adamant about the fact that one, you should set goals that you can control. So instead of setting goals that rely on somebody else to click a button or on someone else to donate or subscribe to you, you set goals for yourself. Like I'm going to stream 20 days out of the next 30. This makes you less likely to doubt yourself and experience burnout because you're directly able to impact whether or not you are successful in achieving your goals. A lot of people set these numbers-based goals and expect to hit them at certain times or in certain ways or a million other different variables. And when those things don't happen, they get upset and they start comparing themselves to others and then they get burned out and then they stop streaming. So don't be that person. Yes, it's okay to set goals on Twitch like number of subscribers in a day or those big follow goals and that's fine, but you need to have a disconnect between your happiness and that goal. So while you can set that goal and reach it and have a celebration and that's great, if your happiness is reliant on being able to reach that goal and you don't reach it in the way that you want and that keeps happening over and over, it will cause burnout and you will stop. So have this disconnect between your happiness and your goal if you're gonna be setting numbers-based goals. All right, and then my last tip is to recognize that content is mother king baby okay <laughs> a trap here that people fall into is that they look at other streamers content and they try to copy it as i said earlier you are you you are not that person the same thing is not going to work for you that works for them you can use these people as inspiration of course you can take their ideas and adapt them to fit your own voice your own brand your own style and that's fine but directly taking something that somebody else does will not work for your channel and this happens all the time the best way that you can innovate here because innovation of your content is the best way to stay relevant successful streamers are constantly analyzing what they're doing and figuring out new fun ways to engage their community the best thing that you can do here is watch your replays you have a lot more time to watch your replays in the beginning because you don't have a ton of extraneous uh, work to do outside of your stream like more successful streamers do but in the beginning when you're watching your content you're analyzing those replays you can find out the areas that you get bored or the things that you don't like or maybe the things that you said that came across weird and you can change that for the future setting some time after your stream to go into your replay and re-watch a little bit of it is so useful and will give you so much advice for the direction that you should take your channel. I think the biggest tip that I can give you guys is to just be kind to yourself while you're learning all this stuff because there is so much to learn. It has taken me years to learn all of this in addition to a lot of other information that I have that I will be sharing in future videos as well. But be nice to yourself because your path isn't gonna be the same, your growth isn't gonna be the same. You might skyrocket in a month or it might take you five years to get partnered. 
it doesn't matter as long as you are enjoying the ride and your why is strong enough to get you through those low moments. As long as your why is strong enough to get you through those low moments and you keep trying to get better and innovate on your content, you will eventually learn what you need to know and you will eventually read reach read success reach success there we go okay all right guys let me know your favorite tip for new or smaller streamers down below in the comments and if you're new here feel free to slap me on the face right below this video for more videos from me every week multiple times a week about live streaming content creation entrepreneurship being a professional in the gaming space but only if you believe that you can achieve your dreams. I'll see you guys in the next video, bye!